Welcome to Weber Math. I'm Nicholas Weber. Today we're going to be talking about Excel, one of the very powerful tools that you have in your formula tool bag. And I have to mention, I am very indebted to Shandu for his excellent article on offset. You can find a link in the description below. Shandu.org is a great place to find Excel information. It's a blog I visit regularly. I'm also enrolled in his Excel school and his VBA classes. Excellent resource. I highly recommend you check it out. But offset, how does it work? Well, it starts by referring to a certain cell in your worksheet. From there, you tell Excel to go down a certain number of rows and over a certain number of columns. Now, up to this point, it may sound very similar to a formula we've looked at before, index. And if this is all you're going to be using offset to do, probably in most circumstances, it will be a better idea to use index instead because index is a more computer-friendly formula. It won't take up as much processing power. It also is not volatile, which unlike offset, which recalculates every time you change your worksheet, index doesn't do that. So in most cases, if this is all you want to do, use index. And if you want to take a look at this video that I link here, I talk about how to use index and match. But the next part of the formula is where offset becomes different than index and starts to become very powerful for certain applications. So again, refer to a cell, go down a certain number of rows, over a certain number of columns, and then, then you tell Excel to look in a certain height range and a certain width range. By default, it's one cell by one cell, but you can make it as large as you'd like. But let's stop talking about it and actually see it in action, and you'll understand quite quickly. All right, let's take a look at how offset works in Excel. So here we're going to go ahead and start with this mysterious table of data. And we want to find out what's in C5. So we'll start with offset. And for whatever reason, let's just start from B4. Now, if we want to know what's in C5, we want to go down one row to B5 and over one column to C5. And then by default, um, offset returns 1 and 1 for the height and width. But it's always good to put that in just to remind yourself if you need to. And as we expect, it returns the value that's in C5. Five. Now, if this is all you're using offset for, as I mentioned in the intro, you'll probably want to use index instead. But where it gets really powerful if we, is if we start increasing the size of this window and using it to do other things. So if you make this window larger, the height and the width larger, it will return an array of values. But we need to wrap this in a formula that can handle an array of values, such as sum. So let's go ahead and sum these three values here. So we want the height to be 3 and the width to be 1. And if things are going the way they should, this will return 7. And it does. Hooray. What if we want to sum these, all of these values? So here we have 7, here we have 6. So it should sum to 13. All we have to do is change the width of this formula to 2. And it should return 13, and it does, which is great. You can also use average for a more real world application. Let's look on sheet 2. So here, let's say that we've run a query. And let's not worry about Amy just yet. Let's say that we've run a query, and this is what we get from our database. We've already sorted, we've already told the query to sort from most to least number of units sold. But then we want to figure out what the average number sold by our middle performers are, which we'll just define as 
are excluding the top two and the bottom two employees. So this month, we've got John and Jane, and they've sold an average between the two of them of 11 and a half units. But if you had a ton of employees, or you were running this very often, it would get tedious to always look for those middle performers. So let's make our life easier with offset. Here's how we can do it. First, we need the number of employees. We're just telling Excel with account A formula to look for values from A2 to A500. There are six employees. And then to find the average of these middle performers, all we have to do is nest an offset formula inside an average formula. So our reference is going to for offsets going to be A1. We want to look down three rows because that will put us in the that'll skip over the top two performers. But we are not interested in the name. We want the number of units sold, so we'll go over one column. And then the height of this thing is going to be the number of our employees, which is found in D2, minus 4, because we want to exclude the top two and the bottom two. And the width is going to be 1. And we do want to give us that extra parentheses at the end. And lo and behold, it gives us 11 and a half. Well, let's say we hire another employee and we, she sells two units. And again, our query is always going to sort from most number sold to least number sold. And then we have another employee. So Excel automatically adjusts this, the height range in the form, the height in the offset formula. So now it will give us the correct average number sold by the middle performers as 10. Thanks so much for watching. Again, if you're interested in more information about Offset, I highly recommend you check out Shandu's site. Link in the description below. If you want more information about me, other Excel tips, VBA tips, take a look at my website, www.webermath.com. Take care.